Okay. And if we can just get a test on that, inshallah, just confirm to us. I, I think, as I understand it, the audio is a little bit low level. Uh, you can see it on there, but I don't, I don't know why, but it's just, it's just low. It doesn't, it doesn't go very high. I'm not sure why. Okay. Can we just confirm the stream is working okay? Then we can get ready to start our class, inshallah. Audio and stuff working. Yeah. Okay, can we get a connection to the girl side? Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, okay, I will. Okay. I think that makes us ready to go. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulihi nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een amma ba'd. So guys, I would just like to start with a little reminder that we should be starting at five o'clock, okay? So at five o'clock, I came in about 10 minutes before five o'clock and there was only maybe two of you here. So just to remind everybody, inshallah, that the class should start at five o'clock. And so try to come before five o'clock, five minutes or so before the time the class starts, inshallah. That is you know, better for everybody, especially because this class takes a lot of organizing. We've got the girl's side and we've got the boy's side and we've got earpiece in one ear and a camera over there and a live stream over there and lots of stuff going on all at the same time. So it takes a bit of organizing. So we like to see you guys here nice and early, inshallah. Okay, after praising Allah and asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to his family and to his companions, we were talking about which topic and which let's start with the let's start with the subject which subject were we talking about last week yes Habib. Quran. about the quran specifically what aspect of the quran were we talking about muhammad surah al-fatiha and we got halfway through we spoke about alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-rahman ar-rahim Maliki Yomidin Iyaka Nabudu wa Iyaka Nestain. Surah Al Fatiha is like a conversation or a back and forward between you and between Allah. When you say the words that you say, Allah says things to you. When you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, Hamadani Abdi, my servant praised me. Because you praised Allah. When you said Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, you praised Allah. What did you praise Allah for? Who can remind me? What do you praise Allah for? What did you praise Allah? Zach? Um, for Allah's names and attributes and actions, creating us, providing for us, giving us everything, giving us life, giving us all the blessings that we have. Excellent. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen And Allah says Hamadani Abdi My servant praised me And when you say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim And those are two names of Allah Both of them mean Merciful What's the difference between them girls? Okay Okay, one relates to Allah's attribute that Allah is generally the most merciful and one of them is very specific. It's about the action, 
that Allah gives mercy to different people in different ways, in different amounts. Okay. When you say Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Majadani Abdi. My servant has glorified me, has said things about how amazing and how perfect Allah is. And when you say Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah says, Athna alayya abdi. My servant has mentioned my praise, has mentioned the good things about me. Maliki Yawmiddin, that Allah is the only one who controls and the only one who owns everything on the day of resurrection. So is there anyone that can help you on the day of resurrection besides Allah? There is no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Who can remind me from, let's see whose turn is it? The boys. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ What does it mean? Yes, Mubin. No, that, that happened two ayahs ago. We went the wrong two ayahs. Boys, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ I've got no hands, girls, hearty. Okay, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. Okay. When you say this, Allah says, هَذَا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي وَلِعَبْدِ مَا سَأَلْ this is between me and my servant. So I want the boys to explain to me, what does it mean this is split between me and my servant? What got split? This is split or divided or shared between me and between my servant. Allah says, هَذَا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ abdi." This is split, divided, shared up between me and my servant. What does it mean shared or divided? Yes, Muhammad, what do you think? It's true you, that you, you are speaking to Allah and Allah is saying something, but you don't hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. But we know Allah says it because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah says it. But I want to know what does it mean this is divided or shared between me and my servant? What got shared? What got divided? You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. What is it that got shared or divided? I give you a clue. I give you a clue. In the beginning, what did you do for yourself? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Maliki Yomiddin. All of it was about what? Allah. Allah, excellent. If you put your hand up, it would have been more excellent, but it was still excellent. All of it was about Allah. Did you ask anything for yourself up to there? Girls, what are you saying? Nobody asked anything for themselves, right? Everything was about Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is about Allah. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim is about Allah. Maliki Yawmiddin is about Allah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Hada bayni wa bayna abdi. Something is about Allah and something is for you. What is for Allah and what is for you? Hmm. The girl said, you alone we worship is for Allah and you alone we ask for help is for us. How? Good. That's a very good answer. The girls gave a good answer. It's a subtle way of asking for help. It's like you're asking Allah for help. You're saying, oh Allah, we want to worship you alone but we can't worship you alone unless you help us. So help us to worship you alone. What's the dua we mentioned for worshipping Allah alone? What was the dua we mentioned? Mubin, do you know the dua? Allahumma a'inni. Who knows the dua? Yes, go on. 
Excellent. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. You can, but don't next time before the class, not during the class, okay? Tamam? Okay. Oh Allah, Allahumma a'inni. Oh Allah, help me. Ala dhikrika, to remember you. Wa shukrika, to be grateful to you. Wa husni ibadatika, to worship you the best way. So you're asking Allah's help, but you're also praising Allah. Nobody deserves to be worshipped except Allah. Okay, what is worship for the boys this time? I know the girls know the answer. Last time the girls gave me, they gave me a long definition. Ismun jami'un li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarda wa min al-aqwali wal af'al al-zahira wal batila. They gave me a long, long definition. Boys, what is worship? You don't have to give me a long explanation. Just tell me what you know. What does it mean to worship? Yes, Habib, it's fantastic. Okay, asking for help from Allah, that's brilliant. And you learned that because Allah mentioned it, right? You alone we worship, you alone we ask for help. So asking help from the things that only Allah can do, that's a kind of worship. What else do we have in kinds of worship, Muhammad? Praising Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. That's all a kind of worship, right? Reciting Quran. Is a kind of worship. Yes, Noah. Praising Allah for everything He's done for us is also a kind of worship. Someone give me give me something more like. So far, we talked about some quite hard examples. What's an easy example of worship? Saying Bismillah before eating. Good. Praying, fasting, okay. Now, girls, you're going to summarize this all for me and tell me what is worship. Everything that Allah loves and is pleased with, whether something you do or something you say, whether it is open or hidden. So let's take that, let's take that bit by bit. Everything Allah loves and is pleased with. Girls, how do we know what Allah loves and is pleased with? The Qur'an and the Sunnah. So from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, we know what Allah loves. So if someone said, for example, Allah loves for you to drink alcohol, would that be true? No. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know that Allah doesn't love for you to drink alcohol? How do you know? How do you know? Go on. Because it says in the Quran. Because it says in the Quran. Yes, Alunaka Anil Khamri wal Maysir, Kulfihima Ismun Kabiru wa Manafi'ul in Nas, wa Ismuhuma Akbaru min Nafihima. The sin in it is very big. Allah said in the Khamra wal Allah is just said in the Khamra wal Maysir, Wal Ansaba wal Az wal Azlam, Rijsun min Amal is Shaitan. It's filth from the action of the shaitan. So Allah Azza wa told us it's how he doesn't like it. So we know what Allah loves because Allah told us in the Quran and we know what Allah hates because Allah told us in the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about it as well. Okay, everything Allah loves and is pleased with. Whether statements or actions. So give me an example of something you say that Allah loves. Alhamdulillah, praising him. Give me an example of something that you do that Allah loves. From the girl's side. Do you come to you in a minute? Okay, praying, praying. Because dua is not wrong, but you, it's kind of 50-50, yeah? So, praying. Okay. Whether inside or outside, hidden or open, Give me an example of something hidden that Allah loves. You can't see it even if you stare at the person all day like this. You can never see it. Girls got it right, but I want the boys as well. Something hidden that Allah loves. 
I mean something you cannot, even if you stare at the person for 100 years, you can't see it. Yes. The angel. A- yes, you're right. Angel, Allah loves the angels. You're right. But I'm thinking something you say or something you do. Otherwise, you're right. I want something you say or do that you can't see it. Alhamdulillah, you can, you can hear it. You can see the person's mouth moving. I want something nobody can see it, nobody can hear it. And Allah loves it. And you do it. The girl said loving Allah. Very good. Yeah, being scared of Allah. Remembering that Allah is watching you. All the things you do with your heart, right? You can't see them or hear them. But Allah loves them. Good. So it doesn't matter whether it's something open or something hidden. So then, if this is only for Allah, does that not mean that on the opposite side, there are people who worship others besides Allah and they could worship them in any of these different ways? Like there are some people who worship other gods openly. Yeah, we talked about the plastic statue. Yeah, they actually have a statue of their God and they pray to it and they cry to it and they make dua to it and they put food for it and all of that stuff. And there are some people who say things and they make a partner with Allah. They don't, they don't do it for Allah alone. Could you think of an example? I don't want you to give that example, girls, because that's slightly complicated. I want you to give an easy example of someone who made a partner with Allah by something they said. Okay, good. Good. I like the example the girls gave. So, for example, someone says, all my blessings came from me. Like Harun. إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيْتُهُ I got this all knowledge from myself. Everything I got, I got from myself. That's a good example. And it could be something hidden. Could you give me an example of making a partner with Allah in something that is hidden from people? They can't see it. In? In what way? Give me an example. But worshipping the stars, Anas, would be, would be obvious, right? Like so you physically see somebody who is praying to the stars or... The girl's got a good one. But saying, you can see it. You're asking them for help, but I can see it. I want something that is completely hidden. You cannot see it. Girls, go and give you an answer again. So not believing something about Allah. Not believing that Allah can see what you do. For example. That's a good example. That's excellent. That's an excellent example. Yes, did you have an example? Do you have an example or not next time? No problem, inshallah, next time. Okay. All of our worship has to be for Allah alone. It doesn't matter whether that is hidden or whether it's open. It doesn't matter whether it's what we say or what we do. All of it, if it's worship, it has to be only for Allah. What do you think are the most common examples of people who worship others than Allah? What do you think? Like, I'll give you one really common one. One of the most common one we mentioned is seeking help. So asking help from the prophets. You've heard of people doing that before? Asking the Prophet for help. That, oh Muhammad, save me. Asking the Sahaba for help. Oh Ali, give me Jannah. Things like that. That's very common. Dua is very common. People making dua to other than Allah. So they raise their hands and they say, Ya Abdul Qadir, oh Abdul Qadir, save me from my problem. Things like that. What other examples do you guys think are the most common examples 
of people who don't worship Allah alone. Go on, what do you think? Like, do you have to be a Muslim? Because no, Muslims don't only worship Allah alone. Christians, like, they worship Jesus. In what way, though? I want a specific example. Okay, Christians worship Jesus. No, but yeah. now I want an example. Asking him for forgiveness. I like, very good, excellent. So they, not only Jesus, they ask their priests for forgiveness. They go to their priest and they say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I was, forgive me. Who are you to forgive me? <laughs> you just work in the church. You don't have a forgiveness for me. It's not, uh, you, don't, you and me, you don't hold forgiveness for me. They ask for forgiveness from, forgive me. And that's only for Allah. So we can only ask forgiveness for sins from Allah. We can ask people for forgiveness for what we did to them. Like, Akhi, forgive me if I said something bad about you. Forgive me if I upset you. But I can't say forgive me for what I did two weeks ago I mean, when I didn't pray. You can't ask the person for forgiveness. That's a very good example. What other examples could you give me? Really, you think of the most common examples of people making a partner with Allah. Girls, do you have some? While we're waiting for the... Oh, we, oh, let's see if we get an answer. Okay, asking people to give you something that only Allah can give you. Could you give me an example of that? Jannah. Okay, good. Give me other examples of things you think are really common where people make a partner with Allah. Yes, Habib. How um, Sikhism and Hinduism believe in like, many gods, kind of like the Hinduism. Very good. Excellent. So praying and offering sacrifices to idols and statues like in Hinduism and other uh, religions where they have lots of, of gods they believe in. Okay, but I've got a very important question about that. Does that mean they believe that those gods created the world together? Yeah. No, no, no. Each, um, for them, each god do different things. Okay, good. To them, each god does different things, but even that is not strictly true. They they see it as a way to get closer. A lot of them will say that I only believe in one powerful God, but all these little gods, they just have little, little jobs. So that it doesn't matter. Not everybody believes that their God created them. That's what I wanted to share with you. That's very important. Because some people would say, as long as they don't believe that their God created them, it doesn't matter. But that's not true. It's only if they worship them or not. Sometimes they worship them with sacrifices. It's very common. Sacrificing animals, sacrificing things, offerings, food, and things like that. That's why Allah Azza wa Jalla said, مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ I don't want them to give me any risk, any food, any provision, any gift. I don't need anything from you. And I don't want you to feed me. Good. What do you think, Zach? Um, the kids ask, um, the idols for ask the idols for help and to know the future is very common. Where is this really common? How is it really common that people try to find out the future? Fortune tellers, horoscopes, believing in the stars. You were born in this month and the stars are this shape and that means that tomorrow something very bad is going to happen to you. Like this they say. They make it that their rizq comes from the stars. And they believe some of them that the rain comes from the stars or that good things come from the stars or bad things come from the stars. Or fortune tellers and magicians and so on. Good. Yes, Mubin. Yes, some people worship angels. It's absolutely true. Some people worship angels. People worship angels.
worship the world, people who worship the jinn in the world of the unseen. Very good, very true. Yes. That's very true, but you know what it is, is that people don't deny that. What they, did, what they talk about is what causes the whole thing to happen. We would say Allah caused, so it's true, that Allah is the one who causes the water to rise up and form clouds, and when the water gets cold and heavy, it rains, but it's Allah who controls it. And the evidence is, there are many times where the rain doesn't fall when it should, and many times when the rain falls when it shouldn't. And many times where people don't expect the rain to fall, but it does. And many times people expect it to fall, but it doesn't. Because Allah is the one who is controlling that, that cycle that we see. Some people believe that cycle that we see is controlled by other things, like the clouds or the stars or the, something like that. Good. What about people who don't worship anything at all? So far you didn't talk about that. I asked you what people, common examples of people worshipping things besides Allah. But what about people who don't worship things at all? Like, I think there's a religion, like, like as in a general religion, where just people do it in silence. And like, as if to start out the rain, like, unexpected rain and everything. Good. So both girls and, and the boys answered the same answer. The people who, for example, they say we don't believe in any God, we just believe in science like atheism and things like that. Okay, is it really true that these people don't worship anything? You can answer yes and no. What do you think? Girls, what do you think? Yeah, so I agree with that. The girls, they said, they, in a way, they do worship things. They worship science. They worship themselves. They worship Mother Nature or whatever they want to, to call it. Many times, they worship gold and silver. Ta'isa Abdul Dinari wa Dirham. The slave of the dinar and the dirham. People worship gold and silver. And they worship money to the point where they would do anything for that money. And they believe that every success comes from having it and every failure comes from losing it. Yes, yeah? so they, they actually start to worship that money or worship themselves or worship nature or worship science. Yes. Okay, but I want, you to, I want you to split between two things, which we talked about here. Split between as-sababu wal musabib. The difference between the one who causes everything to happen and the way he makes it happen. For example, Allah said that the heavens and the earth were together. فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا We split them apart. The issue here is not whether the earth split. The issue is who split it. They will say it split by itself. Okay, but how did it split by itself? Because it split by itself. We will say it split because Allah split it. Yeah, that's the difference. It's like the rain. Nobody disagrees rain comes from the clouds. Nobody said rain comes from Jannah or rain comes from outer space or rain comes from something else. Everybody agrees the rain comes from the clouds. But the issue is who made it come? Allah. Those people will say nothing made it come. The only thing that made it come is just physics, heat and cold, nothing else. Who made the heat and cold? They will say, we will say Allah. They will say no, no, nothing made the heat and cold. It came because of the gas. Okay, who made the gas? Allah. They will say no, no, nothing made the gas. The gas came from the explosion. Okay, the explosion came from who? We say Allah. They will say no, the explosion came from? The fact there was so much pressure, it exploded. Okay, the explosion, the pressure, who made the pressure? We will say Allah. They will say no, the pressure came. And it goes like that. It's not the physical, the physics is not the problem. The problem is who made it happen. That's the, that's the difference. They will, in the end, they will say what? 
What will they say? If you keep going with them, what will they say in the end? They're going to say, we don't know. They're going to say, we don't know. And Allah tells us about this. أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَلْ لَا يُوقِنُونَ They are not really sure what happened. They don't really know. And that's why when you keep going with them, okay, the explosion happened, fine. The whole universe was tiny, tiny high pressure and everything exploded. Who made it explode? They see the pressure. Who made the pressure? Uh, they will, in the end, they will say, we don't know. But one day we will find out. <laughs> That's what they'll say. <laughs> say, find out today. The Quran is here. You don't need to find out tomorrow. You can find out today. The Quran is here. But for them, they, it's always there's something else behind it. And they say, we'll find out in the future. The answer will come to us. One day we will know. That, like that. Okay. So we said, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ means that all of our worship has to be for Allah and that we need Allah's help to worship Him. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ And we said that this is half about Allah because only Allah should be worshipped and only Allah's help should be asked for. But it's also for us. We're asking Allah for His help. What are we asking Allah's help for? إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ What are we asking Allah's help for? Guide us to the straight path. Ihdina, guide us. There are two types of guidance. One comes only from Allah, and one might come from Allah, and it might come from people. What or which one is which? Okay, the girls gave me an answer, but it's slightly confused. It, it, they said guidance to Islam is only from Allah, but someone could have told you about Islam and that's guidance as well. That's right what they said, but they need to refine their answer after the Adhan. Inshallah, after the Adhan, think about it. Two types of guidance. Think about it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu
Okay, did you think about it, Anas? You got an answer for me. Go on then. The Quran. What's that? Which part is that? Which part of that is the answer? The Quran is okay. The Quran is from Allah, no doubt. But we're talking about guidance. There are two types of guidance, right? The girls got it right. They didn't say anything wrong. They said only Allah guides you to Islam, but a person could tell you about Islam. Mm, I want someone who has that answer. Okay. Okay, the girls are getting there. Let's see. Did you have an idea? From Allah? Which guidance is only from Allah? Have a think about it. No, you seem like you had an answer from a long time. Go on. Okay. And the guidance from people is the guidance from the Quran. Nearly, you are not a million miles away. The girls got the answer. The girls got the answer. So, guidance from people. People can show you the right way to do something. Right? I can show you how to pray. The Prophet wasallam can show you how to remember Allah and how to worship Allah properly. Someone can show you how to get to the masjid. But what is it that only Allah can do? Only Allah can make it happen. Does that make sense? You guys with me? Only Allah can actually give you the success for it to really happen. I can show you. Guys, look, the masjid is on this street. But tomorrow, if your car breaks down on the way to the masjid, you're not going to get here. It's all in the hands of Allah. Yes, Habib, what do you think? So acceptance, success is only from Allah. But showing you what to do, that could be from, from anyone, could show you the right way. Does Allah also show you the right way? Yeah. yeah, the Quran, the Sunnah, they show you the right way. So Allah shows you the right way. But the success to actually achieve it is only from Allah. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Sirat is a tariq, a road, a path, a way. Where is this sirat taking us to? Where's the path? Yes. To Jannah. And this sirat is described as mustaqim, straight. And it's called mustaqim for two reasons. First of all, it's straight. The path is straight. It doesn't go in any confusing direction. It doesn't twist around and turn backwards and come back the way it came. It doesn't go left or right. It's a straight, clear path. So there's no way to get confused. There's no way to accidentally go the wrong way. The path is so clear. Taraktukum. I left you on the clearest path. Layluha kanaharihah. لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك. It's night and day are the same. Nobody goes away from it except they're destroyed. But it's also called mustaqim because the people on the path are also mustaqim. How can that be? What does it mean? The people on the path are straight or are upright, you could say, because istiqama can stand up, stand up straight. What does it mean? The people on the path stand up straight. What do you think, Zach? I think that um, if you, like the Muslims, or if you're on the right path. They are Muslims going on the right path. Good. I like that. So the people, the word mustaqeen, if you describe a person as being mustaqeen, it means that they are practicing Islam properly. They are not like half-half. They are not like one foot in and one foot out. They are practicing Islam completely properly. Yeah? So the people who are on the path are mustaqim and the path itself is straight. The path doesn't go left, it doesn't go right. 
It's a straight path, it's a clear path. Who is on that path? If I wanted to know if I was on that path, if the path was true or not, who is on that path? I lost the connection with the girls for a second, but it's okay, there's some people with hands up. Who have I not heard from for a while? I've heard from you and you, and you haven't heard from Muhammad for a while. Muhammad. Who is on that path? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, that's number one. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Girls, who else is on that path? Good Muslims are on that path. Okay, Anas, yalla, who else is on that path? The other prophets. So the prophets and good Muslims. Who else is on that path, girls? The martyrs, okay, who's a martyr? Someone who died for Islam, they're on that path. Who else is on that path? You missed one more. Yeah, carry on. وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا The prophets, the truthful people, the people of the highest level of belief like Abu Bakr, as siddiq who among the women is described as being Siddiqa in the Qur'an? Which woman in the Quran is described as being Siddiqa? We know the most, the most famous man to be described as Siddiq is who? Abu Bakr, right? Abu Bakr Siddiq. Mari, um, Maryam, yes. Maryam. She said Maryam. Correct. Huh? No, no, no. She said to me, my ear, Maryam. Maryam, yeah. Allah said, Wa ummuhu Siddiqa. His mother, she was a Siddiqa. She wasn't a prophet. She was a Siddiqa. At the highest level of belief in Allah and the highest level of Iman and the highest level of truthfulness and trustworthiness. Wa ummuhu Siddiqa. Okay. Who among the female companions was often given the title Siddiqa? Go on. Um, no. Aisha. Aisha. Some of them described her as as Siddiqatu bint as Siddiq. The truthful one, the daughter of the truthful one. Or the truthful believer, the daughter of the truthful believer. Very good. So the Siddiqeen. The Shuhada are the people who died for Islam. They died defending Islam or they died for the sake of Islam. Okay. And as salihin the good, righteous Muslims. Okay, they are on the path. Who is not on the path? Two groups of people. Al-Maghdubi alayhim and al dalun Ghayri al-Maghdubi alayhim wal dalin Who for the boys? Al-Maghdubi alayhim. What does the word mean in the first place? We have a few Arabic speakers. Who, is al who are al-maghdubi alayhim? What does the word mean? What's al-ghadab? What's ghadab in Arabic? What does it mean? No doubt disbelievers, but they're all disbelievers, yani, but I want... What does the word ghadab mean? Yes, Muhammad. No, close, no, no, not hypocrites. Go on. Anger. Anger. I don't know how you got the answer, except maybe somebody stood uh, miming to you. Okay. <laughs> Anger. The people Allah is angry with. Okay, Abdalun are the people who are astray. So tell me, why is Allah angry with the people he's angry with? 
and who are the people who went astray? Why is that? Good. Good. So the girl said, the people who Allah is angry with are the people who knew the right way and they chose to do what? The wrong. They chose to do wrong. They knew the right way. They knew Islam. They knew it was the truth, but they chose. We don't want it. There were some people in Medina when the Prophet ﷺ came. They said, let us go out to see this Prophet. So they saw him and they looked down upon him and they said, what do you think? So the one of them turned to the other and said, he's a prophet, definitely. He is the prophet, he is the messenger of Allah. They said, what do you think we should do? They said, we're going to be his enemy until Yawm al Qiyamah. We're going to be his enemy. So they knew he was the prophet. But they, instead of choosing to follow him, they said, yes, we know he's the prophet. But we don't want to follow him, we want to be his enemy. Others, they said, we have no idea who this person is. And we don't know what's the difference between right and wrong. They are al-dalin. Why is it important? Or why are we told about these two groups of people? Why is it important to know about these two groups of people? What's the danger for us? The girls got a good answer. Boys, Anas, what's the danger for us? Because we might become like those people, right? The danger is we might become like those people. We might become people who know that Islam is the truth but choose not to follow it. Well, how many Muslims do we have who know that you have to pray five times a day but they don't pray? They know you have to come to Jumu'ah but they don't come to Jumu'ah. They know that riba is haram but they still trade in it. They know that it's not allowed, for example... Uh, there are certain things that are not allowed or certain things that are forbidden and they do them. I'm not saying they are the same as those people because those people rejected Islam. These people are not rejecting Islam, but you can see they are going down the same road, right? They know all these things are wrong, but they don't, they don't care about it. They're not trying to change or improve. They know it's wrong, but they're doing it anyway. So we're asking Allah, don't make me from those people. And don't make me from the people who are ignorant and they don't know. So my last question is, and I'll ask one half to the boys and one half to the girls. So for the girls' side, what is your greatest weapon against being from al-dalin? Seeking knowledge, learning about Islam, learning your religion. What do you do, boys? To not be from those people who Allah is angry with. You've got knowledge now. What do you have to do? Let's see. Yes, Habib. Make it more general. You're right. Make it more general for me. You've got knowledge. So now what are you going to do with that knowledge? Use it. Use it. Use the knowledge you have and practice the knowledge you have. Don't be someone who knows what's wrong but you don't care. Practice the knowledge that you got. And when you ask Allah this, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ Allah says, هَذَا لِعَبْدِ وَلِعَبْدِ مَسَأَلْ This belongs to my servant and he's going to get or she's going to get what they ask for. So Allah answers your dua and then you say, Ameen, which means, Istajib, accept it, O Allah. Accept our dua from us, O Allah. Guidance to the straight path. That makes sense? Yes, Habib. In one second, we're going to pack the class up. You can go then, inshallah. Did that make sense to everybody? Anything I said didn't make sense? Any questions to finish off on that topic, girls? Okay. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention. Allah knows best. Was salatu was salam. على نبي 